All right. Hope everyone is doing quite well. I just want to grab my coffee here. We'll get started. You know, I had some things that I wanted to discuss today. More of some, some more social phenomena that is just blowing my mind. All right, let's get the coffee going. But before we get to all that, I want to do some, some gratitude stuff first for my own sanity. Ryan Peterson, how you doing? Ryan Metzger, how you doing? Um, so for a lot of you guys, um, you know, right now in this period, I think I've been stating it a lot that gratitude is incredibly incredibly important to what we have going on. It keeps perspective in mind and and helps us get through, you know, a, a, a crazy time. So for me, for myself today, I wanted to start with the gratitude of, of AJ, my business partner at Art of Charm, uh, dropped over some tech gear here um, that I'm messing with and and some kettlebells yesterday because I've been stuck in my apartment and I haven't even been able to work out to the well to the best of my ability and I was getting quite bored with um, body weight exercise but I gotta say not only am I appreciative of being able to do this exercise getting some weights yesterday but I'm also appreciative of having this time to reflect and think about how things are going and just yeah I've I've probably haven't been so focused in quite a long time as well considering that focus wise um what, what else am I going to do except focus on art of charm stuff AOC business and and everything that we got going on here. Uh, so those things were really important to me. And that, so I'm appreciative of having the opportunity, the time, the focus to do things, to be able to work out. As I, for those of you who follow me on Twitter, know that I've been posting what started out as prison workouts to gratitude workouts, seeing how we're going to be in this mess for a, a little while. So that's where I'm, I'm at with that. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll be out of this mess soon. This is a little over two weeks for myself here in Hollywood being quarantined. And I gave you guys some stories of what was going on in Hollywood yesterday. If you're interested in checking that out, you can go to my Periscope yesterday. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. If you have any questions or comments, throw them in the chat, throw them in, the, in Periscope. I'll be happy to get to them. Um, one of the things that I wanted to chat about today, which is just concerning, is how the apps that we have, all the social media has been training ourselves, as well as our youth, to, to just do things for attention. For instance, if you've been following any of the media for whatever, since this thing started, there's a few focuses of the media. Yeah, Trump sucks. There's that part of the media. There's here's everything that we're doing wrong part of the media. Here's all the scaremongering of the media. All of that stuff is awful and it drives me nuts. And I'm sure it's only heightening the panic and the anxiety that everybody is already feeling at a heightened level. But there's one more piece to this, that social media, one of the most powerful systems of influence that we have, that is in cahoots with the media. The second most powerful system of influence in the world. So the two most powerful influences of influence 
is number one, media. Number two, social media. Both of them. And the one that they've come in together in, to, in cahoots is social media has been training people that attention is good and that you can get attention in two ways. One, you can do amazing things and share them and people will watch them and and you can get adulation of followers and the rest of the thing. But there is no difference on social media between good publicity and bad publicity. It, it amplifies this idea that all publicity is good publicity. Rico, how you doing, buddy? Long time no see. So good publicity is no different than bad publicity. And how do we know this? Well, because we see this in how social media works. Even stupid things that you do are you gain attention for, you gain followers for, you gain attention. And there's no difference between the great, there's no difference between the adulation you get of practicing a craft and doing it over and over again and getting really good at it and showing it on YouTube or Periscope or, or, or Instagram, right? You're, you're learning guitar skills all your life and you make a video and you put it out there and a bunch of people, they find it and they, and they follow it. There is no difference between that and licking an aisle of deodorant for shock value and getting followers for that. There is no difference. Now, I grew up with in a two parent home, but and when I was in high school, my parents separated, but I stayed with my dad. Now, when I did things that were stupid, <laughs> My dad, if he caught me or saw it, would be sure to let me know that what I had done was stupid and there would be ramifications after that. And it wasn't so out of line that I would get bopped upside the head if I did something really stupid, right? So as a child, if I was to lick an aisle of, of deodorant, Guess what? I would have been bopped upside the head. Now, we already know through studies and stats that, that a lot of children today are growing up in a fractured family, which puts both parents in a position to be emotionally manipulated by their children. So, either parent cannot be looked at as the disciplinarian because that could jeopardize their visiting rights. If a father is only is already only getting weekends and the child now doesn't want to go over because he's grounded. So regardless, I'm not getting it. That's a whole nother story. However, if there is no one to hand out consequences, for doing stupid things like licking an aisle of deodorant and yet because you're not getting disciplined for that, you're not getting a bop upside the head, you're not being told that that is stupid and you're being rewarded with attention and followers, adulation, all publicity now is good publicity, any publicity, then, then we are going to be raising Generation stupid. Now, I am not anyone to say that because I'm Generation X that I'm over it. Everyone is dealing with the dilemma of, of social media and putting themselves out there and how, they're, how they want to put themselves out there, what their brand is going to be, who they are now. As a podcast company, the Art of Charm podcast, we have interviewed over 14 years, 15 years, tons of different people. And in fact, some of those people that we have interviewed 
have done monumental feats of strength and courage from, from, from rest his soul Kobe Bryant to guys like David Goggins, all right? Two people who have went out of their way to test the limits of human physical cap capableness, physicality to the utter limits of, of what you can do. And, and we've also interviewed people who, who uh, play pranks or write books and or we try to do our best to promote people and give people a platform who have done things that we feel benefits society in a positive manner to the best of our ability. Now, everybody is hypocritical at one point or another, and I'm sure you can go through our history of interview guests and find people who are seriously flawed. I can't go over all of that. I can't remember everybody, but we try to do the best of our ability. But social media, in its, its own way, doesn't do that. And TikTok, another f format, we're seeing all of, a lot of, of behavior that would have resulted in me getting bopped upside the head or a lecture of, of why that was stupid being rewarded. Now, granted, all of that, I've said it all, there's your, the, your get off my lawn moment from Generation X. But I will end it with this, I will end this rant with this. And the, I will end the rant with, for everyone who I have seen this week, licking toilets, licking deodorant, uh, having coronavirus parties, and the, the rest of the social media folk who have gained adulation and attention for doing dumbass shit. They've been arrested. They've contracted the virus. They, uh, they have all found themselves in situations that hopefully will be examples for everybody else out there who wants to continue doing dumbass shit. That's all I want to say. <laughs> I don't wish this disease on anybody. I, I don't wish any harm to anyone. However, uh, I, 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 we need somehow to figure out a way to rather to encourage this sort of behavior, to figure out a way that promotes, that promotes behavior that, that shows cute feats of human ingenuity, physicality, uh, very remarkable, uh, just things that are, that, that make us strive to be our best. When I was younger, there used to be a show called That's Incredible. Now, I don't remember it all too well. There was a show that was called That's Incredible and there was a show called Real People. And these were both shows that celebrated the uniqueness in human beings. I guess you could say that they were the, they were the original social media entertainment. And at the same time, they highlighted the things that, that made us special, that made us unique, that showed our, our creative output. You know, so on Twitter, and I spend most of my time there, and if any of you guys are not following me there, you can. I have a private account, AOC Johnny, and the Art of Charm account. And one of the things that I've been seeing is the reason I know that these toilet lickers and, and coronavirus people are 
now having a hard time with the ramifications of their actions is because people have been posting the, the ramifications, the consequences on my timeline. I'm seeing it in my feed. This person's now arrested. This person's now found guilty of licking this. This person is now has coronavirus for their coronavirus party. Now we have mob shaming going on <laughs> on top of the, 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 the consequences of their action. And I already posted this week, I was like, don't you think these people are going to have enough hard times in life that they are willing to lick deodorant? That, that they, and, and, and are dealing with the consequences of that, that they really need on top of that mob shaming to go along with it? I mean, wow. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to do my part here and I'm trying not to be, I am I'm trying to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. I even wrote, I was like, these people haven't, they're, it's, it's already set up that they haven't been raised right or that they have found a, another path through life where they're going to be chasing attention and they're going to be dealing with the consequences of that. And let me also state, what you chase becomes your God. If you're chasing views, you're chasing likes, you're chasing follows, well, then you become subservient to that chase and you will deal with the consequences of that. Now, listen, I can spout all this all I want and I'm, <laughs> thank you, uh, <laughs> Tyrannis. I appreciate that calling me Bon Jovi. I wouldn't be the first time, my friend. I got called, um, uh, what's the... The guy from uh, uh, the Mike Myers movies yesterday. Anyway, listen, I'm, I am not saying that I'm ab above any of this bullshit. I am not saying that I, I am not guilty of it myself. However, when I see these things and I think, wow, I was young once too. I'm sure I could have done something so stupid. No, not really. You know why? Because I was bopped up that side of the head enough times to where I would have thought twice about licking handrails and toilets and deodorant and ice cream and putting it on the shelves and having coronavirus parties to spite the World Health Organization and jeopardizing everybody else's safety. So, and, and how about this? Since I just bagged on all of these people, I will hand you a story of stupid from when I was young, from myself, just to even the playing field. And <laughs> remember Tide Pods? Yeah, man, that's ex exactly. This is what I'm talking about. Now, I told this story the other day. For those of you who haven't heard it, I will give you this. This puts me on an even playing field. This was a, a, a page from Generation Stupid on my own book, and there was no social media to give me any adulation, except now, many years later. I used to live in North Carolina, and was it 99, 98, maybe 97, I can't really remember. There was Hurricane Fran. Hurricane Fran was coming through up the coast, and the thing about Living in North Carolina during hurricane season is through a season you might have been warned about four or five, maybe six hurricanes, and they never came through. They would usually roll up the side of the coast through outside of and nip Florida and roll up the side, but they never